Today's lesson is a lesson of practicality. Practicality, what is that, Apostle? Well, it is a teaching on things or principles you can apply to your life right now. Come on, say to yourself, I need something right now. Amen. You know the Lord has called you to great ministry. You know God has called you for a time such as this. Come on. I'm not the only end time prophet. Amen. You, come on. God called you to do something awesome. He, he called you a long time ago. But you're like many people who want to be in the industry so bad and waiting for a release date. Well, I want to encourage you. Amen. The release has come. So I want to teach on some practical teaching today. Some, some practical teaching um, dealing with things that you can utilize right now. Amen. So that you can apply to, apply to your life right now. You need change right now. You need to see it man may manifest right now. Amen. And so we're going to give it to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the gospel according to Matthew. Amen. We're going to Matthew 20. You got your Bible? Come on, get your Bible. Matthew uh Mama always say, son, you know, you say the gospel according to, amen. She was a teacher, amen, and a preacher for sure, amen. Glory be to God. If your mom is still living, amen, come on, you better holler at her and tell her you love her, amen. I sure not miss my mom, amen, but glory to God, I believe she's with the Lord, amen. She done transition on. Sadie Mae Cooper, amen, a transition on. Glory be to God, amen. And you know, we all got to go that way. Amen. Hallelujah. When our time is up here, amen, we got to go in and just transition. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll be singing that song, you know, one glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a land where trouble life is over, I'll fly away. I just wrote that right there. Wait, wait. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number 20, verse 16 says this, So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Watch this. For many be called, but few mm -mm -mm, chosen. Isn't that so? Many be called, but few chosen. We find these words, so the last shall be first and the first shall be last. For many, so come on, say many, wait, many, many, uh-huh, I hear you. Many be called, but few, somebody say few, few chosen. What does it mean to be called? What, what does that mean? A lot of people say that, you know, I've been called, I've been called. You've been called to what, huh? You've been called, what, what does that mean, I've been called? Well, let, let me elaborate on this for a little bit. A calling is a summon. You ever been summoned to court? Oh, Lord have mercy. Nobody likes that. You know, they come on. They, they, they put it in your mailbox or, they, you know, you get a ticket. Lord have mercy. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, nobody get no more tickets. They give you a ticket. The, the officer give you a ticket and say, this is summons to court. Well, what does that mean? Well, a summon is definitely not an invitation. Amen. Because if you get a ticket, you don't need to invite the court. I mean, that's not, that's not a good thing at all. All right. A summon is not an invite. It is not an invite. But it is an authoritative sin for that demands you, you, you appear. It is, a, it is an authoritative sin for. Amen. We be sin for. That means it, it, there's an authority that's sending for you. There's an authority that's reaching out to you, not to invite you, but it's an authoritative situation. So it, it, it's something that's mandatory. It's a, a, a mandatory sin for you to appear in a set place at a set time for a set purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every individual on the face of this planet will definitely testify to the fact that when Almighty Jehovah God sends for you, when he summons you, when he calls you, watch this. It always seems as if the timing is off, don't it? Seems like it just, you know, it's the wrong time. Like, God, why are you calling me now? It's like, you know, I'm doing something, you know what I'm saying? Can, can a brother do something? Can a sister do something? You know? But God always seems to call you when you're doing something. I don't know too many people that the Lord calls or interrupts their life when, when they're not doing anything. You know, sort of like with ministry. If I see a person not doing anything, that's like, I'm not really, really enthused about that person connecting with vision because if you're not doing nothing for the devil, then what you going to do for God? Most people, they're busy for the devil, and you know they can get busy for God. But you know, when you're busy for the devil, you're bound under Satan's yoke. So we don't want to be busy for God. Hmm. 
We want to be about kingdom business. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. Amen. Look at somebody say, handle your business. Amen. All right. Glory to God. But listen, a lot of times, you know, God is calling us and it's not the right time. But see, time as we conceive it and perceive it is different from God perceiving time. See, God's time is always in sync. Amen. Because God is governed by himself. You know, we told in the earlier lesson that God is governed by himself. He's his own government. Amen. It's called the Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Three of one. So God is governed by himself. Hallelujah. And by his own word. Amen. He can stand by it. Well, we said that no one should be swearing about anything. Amen. But only God can swear by his word because he, he can accomplish his word. Amen. Without man's intervention. But we can't do nothing without the intervention of God. That's why we must have a prayer life. Somebody say prayer life. Prayer life. Amen. And I'm not talking about that Monty Hall, let's make a deal prayer. God, I, I'll do this if you do that. Mm -mm, it's not like that. We need to pray, spend time, make time to spend with God. Amen. And we need to be quiet some time to hear what God has to say back to us. Amen. It, it's a two-way thing. Amen. It's a two-way street. It's a reciprocated um, thing. We need, we need to hear from God, too, because God speaks, and he wants to say something to you. He has something awesome to tell you. Amen. He's he going to whisper something in your ear. Maybe, maybe in a couple of minutes. Amen. Listen. Amen. Just listen. Pay attention. That's why it's not good to gossip so much. Amen. It's, it's not good to gossip, but all a backbite. You know, you backbite people. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. You don't need to be backbiting on people. Amen. Leave folk alone. Amen. Get in the presence of God. See what the Lord is saying to you. All right? Don't be a backbiter. Amen. Hallelujah. Be a worshiper. How about that? Glory to God. Check this out. Now, I'm going to say this, and I know people all over the world are going to say, you know, Apostle, I, I don't know about that statement, but I'm, I'm going to say it anyway. Watch this. I need to inform all of you watching who claim salvation in Jesus' name. I want to inform you that you, as well as myself, we got to examine ourselves daily and make sure that we're in the will of God. Some of us are moving in ministry, and you know what? Sad to say, a lot of us have not been called. But then on the flip side, many of us have been called by Jehovah God. And many of us have not answered that call. That's not good at all. I sure pray that's not you. Now I know conviction is going through this camera, through this TV set. I, I come on. I know you're feeling conviction through your flat screen and do your do your computer, your desktop, your laptop. You feel a conviction right now. Somebody is. Because God has called you a long time ago. But you, like many other people, you know, you have that spirit of the industry waiting to be released, your release record, your release date. Now, I'm not saying, you know, uh, release your, your, yourself before the time, but I am saying check with God and make sure that you are in his will. Because if you're in his will, then God is obligated to fulfill his word. But if you're out of his will, you're praying to miss and you're wasting your time. Which brings us to this point. A lot of men and women of God in this hour, not only are you wasting your time, but you're wasting God's time and everybody else's time. You're just like a waste of time, a lot of people. I'm talking about religious folk and people to my day say, look, you're wasting God's time, a lot of you. We've all done it. I've been guilty of it, but I got delivered from it. I'm not trying to waste God's time. I know what God called me to do, and I'm not waiting for nobody to tell me to go nowhere or do anything. I'm listening to the voice of the Lord God. Amen. And as God leads me, I'm going to go. I don't care where you say go, where you say go, I'm going to do it. That's it. It's not a debate. I don't need nobody to vote on it. God called me to this global apostleship, this marketplace apostleship. He called me from the Hollywood stars to serve the rocks and the dirt. He interrupted my life. Things was good. Amen. Money was good. The life was good. Everything good. But God said, you know what? I have need of you. He said, come hither. <laughs> It'll come up. And the Lord has really blessed me abundantly. I'm so glad I did. Does it get, does it get real challenging sometimes? Sure it does. Because I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm still in a real world where people have their perception of who I should be and how I should live, what I should do. But you know what? My surrender is to the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't live to please no man. I live to please the Lord Jesus. I live to please Jehovah God. Because he is the creator. Not you. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, we thank God for who he is and who he allows us to be. Amen. But we're in an hour where, you know, people need to be free. There's too many people bound in the house of God and in ministry and stuff. I mean, what's going on? So I want to deal with this. There's a lot of people wasting God's time. Unfortunately, this is a fact. 
Now, I know many of you are saying, uh, Apostle, I, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I just wouldn't waste God's time. I, I would not me. It's not me. You know, you, you, you're sounding like you know, you know, the, the apostles. You know, when, you know, uh, uh, before before they, you know, they, they got the communion on. You know, uh, Lord, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? You know, is it you? I'm not the one to judge. I'm just dealing with the facts. Is it you? Are, are you wasting God's time? Are you, are you always testifying about the Lord, this and that, but still have not been obedient by answering the call of God in your life? What good of a testimony is that? Are you a Sunday saint? I often, I often teach this to all of my sons and daughters in the gospel. I tell them, I say, listen, if, if, you, if, if you be a, 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 just do weak in worship, you will be weak in worship. Let me say that again. If you just do weekend worship, you'll be weak in worship. It's going to take more than weekend worship, y'all. Every day is the Lord's day. How about that? Oh, I just said something right there. Every day is the Lord's day. I know I got an amen somewhere in the country, somewhere in the world, somebody watching this. Come on now, Apostle BBJ ain't crazy. Amen. I'm just crazy for Jesus. I know I'm talking right. I say it one more, one more again. If you are weekend worship, you'll be weak in worship. If you do weak in worship, you'll be weak in worship. If you believe in weak in worship, you'll be weak in worship. Did you get it yet? Huh? Every day is the Lord's day. We need to live unto the Lord every day. We need to realize that every day could be our last day. So we have to live it to the fullest and give God all the glory. Amen? I know I got to even somewhere in the world. All right, here we go. Now, you got to understand, to all my sons and daughters, as your father in the gospel, you know, I, I need to share this, which is very important that I share this with you. I'm talking about all of them who are in covenant with the KPM Live, the Kingdom Power Movement Church Worldwide Vision. You know, our vision is to empower the world, amen, through applicable scripture, through divine revelation, through Holy Ghost power on a day-to-day -day basis, amen. You know, we believe in one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Come on, we believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. We believe in baptism in Jesus' name. Acts 4 and 12 said, there's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. So it's not a debate. If somebody writes you a check and put Bubba Watkins on it, amen, and your name is, is Will. Willie Jones, come on, you can't check, cast that check. So, I mean, it is what it is. Our salvation has been purchased in Jesus' name. Acts 4 and 12 backs it up. Amen. And that's just one scripture. We can go all through the word. Amen. Because the Bible testifies of the fact, amen, that we were bought with a price. Amen. Glory be to God. We all were born in sin and shaped in what? Iniquity, 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 iniquity. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank God for salvation. Amen. Glory be to God. Ah, 